Praise the Lord. This is Apostle Robert Bryan from, of, of the Place in Healing Church, with which I am the pastor. We're located at 1590 Sunbury Road, the Valleydale Ballroom. And I'm glad to welcome all of my viewing audience tonight to Dig Deep Bible Study. Listen, Bible study is what keeps us and what holds us close to God. Amen. So let's get started with some prayer before we start on our Bible study. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. And we praise you and we lift you up and we magnify your precious holy name, Lord Jesus. We ask Heavenly Father tonight, Lord God, that you would yet be with me, Lord God. Let your spirit lead God and direct, Lord God, that the words of my mouth might represent the meditations of thine heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Open up the minds, the ears, and the hearts of everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we have been talking about the Holy Spirit. And last week, we, we, we talked about why the Holy Spirit was here. Uh, we're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit in connection to spiritual warfare and how the Holy Spirit helps you defend yourself from spiritual warfare. Because we, we have learned that spirits uh, are fallen angels that came to earth with Lucifer when they were kicked out of heaven and they came with him. He took a third of the angels with him. And all of those angels, when they came, they came here with power. They had powers in heaven and they are, which were gifts from God and gifts and callings come without repentance. So he didn't treat them any different than he treats us. God will never go against his own principles and facts. So they came here with power and their chief mission, their primary mission, when the Bible says kill, steal, and destroy is what Satan's mission is, he's not talking about taking away your physical life. What he is talking about is taking your mind and turning it away from God, having you turn your back on God, thereby you wind up killing your own spirit because you, without a relationship with God, we are all going to go to eternal damnation, which is in hell's fire. And that's what the, the Satan's primary goal is, is to get you to join him in hell by changing and getting you not to believe in God, not to believe that what God says is true. So we need to know how and what these spirits are. Now, spirits operate on a different level than demons. Demons are what actually come and talk to you and influence you to do something other than what God wants you to do. And there are different spirits that have different uh, primary focuses in your life. They have bondage, they have whoredom, they have antichrist and so forth and lying spirit. And, and so these spirits have demons that operate in our lives. They want to, they, 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 they influence us in all kinds of ways. But the Holy Spirit is the power that helps us to not do those things that they want us to do, okay? So when we talked about the Holy Spirit, we understand that he is a comforter uh, in a better, better uh, or a paraclete in the Greek, which, which translated means called beside or alongside to help. He is here to help you do the will of the Lord, okay? And it's a gift that's available to everyone. However, uh, you and I have to receive Jesus as our Savior to have access to his spirit, amen? And he came as a teacher to remind us of God's word, to testify of what God will do, and to and convict us of sin so that we don't sin anymore against God. Okay, he is what breaks the yoke of the enemy around our neck so that we have a yoke that is easy with, with that has light burden that comes from Jesus. So what we're going to talk about tonight is because we have talked about power. We've talked about uh, this power and, and we're talking about anointing, but we want to talk about the authority that we as members of the body of Christ have because of our relationship with Jesus. And so the Greek word for authority, the term for authority in both in the New Testament is exousia. And it sometimes it's translated as power, referring primarily not to physical strength or power as in dunamis, which is physical power, but to the rightful and legitimate exercise of power. A person has authority primarily by virtue of the position one's hold, not by physical coercion or might. 
I mean, if I had physical coercion as authority, as a pastor, as an apostle, wouldn't nobody be walking around here not saved? Because I know the benefits of being saved, but that's not how it works. It works with having authority. And all authority, all authority can be characterized as either intrinsic or delegated. An intrinsic authority is dominion one exercises because it is in, innate in that person or inherited, inherent in the office held by that person. In other words, God has intrinsic authority because he is the creator of the universe, has sovereignty and dominion over all things. And, and this is just who he is as God. And Jesus has that same authority. And delegated authority is given from one who has intrinsic authority. Look at it like this. When you go to work every day, you have a boss and there are certain people that sit up under, that he delegates to you to do certain things by his name in the company. God has that same authority because everybody that has authority, God has given it to him. Nobody that has authority. As much as I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, he was president because God gave him that authority to be president at that time, okay? But delegate authority is not innately or inherently authoritative. In other words, it just don't happen because you are who you are. It is something that is derived from somebody. It's given to you by somebody who has intrinsic authority by the nature of who they are. And God has authority over everything in this world, okay? All other authority that we have is God's and all authority is derived from him. It, there's, there's no other way to think about it. God has given uh, Jesus authority over all things in heaven and in earth. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 28 and 18, what the Bible teaches us. In Matthew 28 and 18, the Bible says, uh, let me let me get it for you because I didn't I didn't know this was going he was going to put that on me. Um, when he when he rose from heaven, he went to the disciples and he said, in verse 18, he said, and Jesus came and spake unto them all, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Heaven and in earth. Now he has that power and he has authority with that power. And so he has the ability to uh to 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 do with us to give us that authority from him because he has the intrinsic authority and we have the delegated authority. And what does that mean to you? Uh it means since all authority is derived from God, Christians should submit to the structures of authority that God has established. Now, there is a structure in the workplace. There's a structure in our government. There's a structure, no matter where you're dealing with God at, God has intrinsic authority and he has placed the authority, the authority of government in place. He's even done it as it concerns the authority of the church. And there may be some who don't agree with this, but when we talk about, uh, I, I want to think, I want to say it's in 1 Corinthians 10 and I want to say 28. Let me make sure. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe 2 Corinthians. Uh, but I know it's in, and I might be, I think I'm in the wrong. Let me back up. Because I know what it says. I just want to read it to you. I don't want to, to paraphrase it. I want to quote it specifically. Yes, I'm sorry. It's in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28 when it says, And God hath set some in the church first as apostles. There are people who don't believe apostles exist because of what they think it takes to qualify an apostle. The only thing it takes to qualify you as an apostle is for you to have God have called you to that position and sent you. The word apostle means really one who is sent. So in, in that case, many of us are apostles. Most all pastors are apostles because we were sent by God to do our job. Secondarily, in the government of the church, he said there are prophets. They're the second ones. And then thirdly, there are teachers. Notice what's absent that come as part of the fivefold, pastors and evangelists. They're part of the fivefold ministry. But these are the three that are the ones that happen in the church. And the gifts of healings, helps, governments, and diversity of tongues. Uh, after that, miracles, after the teachers are miracles. All of these things 
line up with the government of the church, but we tend to want to take them and pull them out. And so we have put some people in positions in the church that don't hold the position that they really rightfully think they do. Pastors are people who nurture and, and guide members of the church. Teachers are who create disciples. Prophets are who are, are not just people who speak into your future. They also come with warnings. OK, so we have all of these things available to us. We just have to believe. And since that authority comes from God, we have to submit ourselves to authorities ordained by God because it flows from submission to God himself. So in other words, what I'm saying is when we begin to believe in God, we put ourselves in a position to receive the power of the Holy Spirit operating on the inside of us. OK, operating alongside of us. We can speak things as not as though they were. I know people don't believe that, but. That speaking, I need you to understand, is I want a car, so I speak a car into existence. That's not exactly what that scripture means. What it means is, it's actually more referring to when the Bible says, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, that delight in God will press up, God will impress upon you that which he wants you to have that which he wants you to do, those things that he wants you to perform. And once you delight yourself in the Lord that way, now you're like, okay, God, I get it. I got it. When he told me to leave Oklahoma and come to Columbus, Ohio, a place that I never planned on coming back to, even though it was home, only was coming back to see family and go back to Oklahoma to live. But when God pressed upon me that I needed to come here, I came here for what he told me to come here for. Things didn't work out the way I thought it, but as things work out, we understand that in Romans 5, 8 and 28, it says all things work together for the good of them, that for them who love God and them who are the called according to his purpose. So when things didn't work out the way I thought it was, I still didn't lose my love for God and he moved me in a different direction. But I came here based on him telling me that I needed to come. I obeyed the authority of God in my life. Amen. And so sometimes authority is positional. It is positional. It is an authority. This authority is authority by virtue of a position held by an individual, not by an innate authority of the individual him, themselves. OK, uh, I have the authority as a pastor, a place of healing church that I have to lead with compassion according to what God tells me to do. But there are certain things that happen, like what time church is going to start, uh, not what time church is in, that's up to God. Who's going to be hold certain positions? I pick deacons. I don't call pastors or preachers, but I do get to pick the elders of the church. How do we know this? Because when Moses, back in, in, in when, they, when they had exited uh, Egypt, he was having trouble with trying to keep up with everything. There was too many people for him to do everything that he needed to do to teach. And, and, and and, and exact punishment or do or, or, or whatever he had to do to exact the rule of law. So his father-in-law told him, said, listen, you need to pick some elders, though that you know to be elders and have them have captains and everybody else and have give them smaller factions to, to, uh, to rule on. And you rule on the larger, tougher cases. It's much like our system of government. We have circuit courts, local courts, and the Supreme Courts at the state level and national level. These are the things that happen because they have different levels of authority to rule over certain things. And we have our United States Supreme Court that when they rule, it's rule regardless of what everybody else says. Amen. And we have a government that, lo that governs the same way, even though we, we elect them. Okay. But that's the rule of government. That's how that works. It's set up by position. I have authority as the pastor of, Seed of, Oak, of, of a place of healing church, formerly as the pastor of Seed of Oak Christian Center in Oklahoma. I had authority as the pastor. It was position that gave me that authority, not just because I'm a big guy and I am pretty big. I'm 6'5 by 370, so I'm not no little fella, but I still had authority that came from God. God established an order of authority also in spiritual matters, which is where I'm trying to get you to see. I'm trying to take you to see how it works in your everyday life. And now I want you to see it as it works in the spirit world. Okay. As matters of will, uh, the Bible is God's word. 
The scripture speaks with divine authority. What the Bible says, that is his Logos word. When he says it, that's it. That's all. It's not really for us to try to interpret in and of ourselves. We need to get on one accord with the spirit so that we can talk and speak with affirmation, knowing that we are doing what we're doing according to the word of God, not according to ourselves. So the Bible teaches us as it concerns the spirit world. It says in Mark 16, 16 through 18, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Let's stop right here. Uh, baptism. Okay. The Bible says in there are two way, two ways we should be baptized. We have to be bad, born uh, of the water and of the spirit. And how do I know this? Because John 3 and 5 says, Verily, verily, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus when he came into him on the night. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Water baptism is submergence in water. Now, I know there's, there's some people who believe what words should be used. And I'm not here to get into that or dispute one way. I know how I do it. And, and that's what really matters. And I do it in the name of Jesus. There are others who do it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm not telling you if you didn't get it done my way, you're not getting into heaven. I'm not telling you if you didn't get it done their way, you're not getting into heaven. I'm telling you that you need to be submerged in water, in water baptism, okay? That is a given of the word. But then there is the spirit. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. We all need to be baptized by, by the Holy Spirit. And by the evidence of speaking into other tongues. Now, there are other things that signs that come along with it, but your personal first sign of knowing that you have been, have, have been filled with the Holy Spirit is by the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Everything else is not what makes you know it first. It doesn't mean you can't know it through those things, but you should know it first by that, because as it was in the beginning, it is now. It didn't change. And so the first day that the Spirit came back here, was through other tongues. Amen? Okay, now. So now, here's what happens. The Bible says, in, 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 then Peter said unto them, after he had preached, after on the day of Pentecost, when they thought that everybody had been drunk with wine, he says that two things, so there are three things that were going to happen that you needed to do when they asked him, what must we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Three things. You have to repent. You have to change your way of doing things. You have to look at how you've been living your life and say, this is not right. I need to go back and get it done another way. And that's getting it done according to the Logos word and with the help of the Holy Spirit, which happens after or before, don't have to happen in this order, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're baptized, and then you receive the Holy Spirit by the evidence of speaking in tongues. They said over 3,000 people were added to the body of Christ on that day. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the apostles walked around working signs and wonders and miracles. Now let's go back to Mark chapter 16 and pick it up at verse 17. Verse 17 says, these are the signs, and I'm paraphrasing when I say that. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. That's quote. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, there goes that authority. There's where your authority comes from. The authority is in the name of Jesus. Uh, because the Bible says that the mention of that name, uh, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, this is how we get there. He says, but they shall speak with new, they shall, in my name, he says, they shall cast out devils. So that gives you authority over spirits. There are those who think that you don't have the authority to cast out some spirits because they operate at a higher level. That's not true. You have that authority if you can believe and be baptized in Jesus. In, into the name of Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, you have the authority to cast spirits out that want to, to destroy the thoughts in your mind, make you think stuff. That's not what God would have you to think. This is what we talk about when we say have iniquities. It's because it's, it's a thought that we later act out. We have a commission of sins, sins that we know that we do that we shouldn't do, and the omission of sins that we don't think we know that we do, but we really do. 
we know we're doing something that's morally incorrect according to the word of God. If we study to show ourselves approved, a workman who needeth not be uh, ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's found in, in, in uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. You need to know these scriptures because they apply to your life every day. Okay? Acts 2 and 38 says, Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus. In his name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That does not give you the right to tempt God and go, go say, well, Pastor Brian said I can drink any deadly thing and, and live. And, and so I'm going to go get me some turpentine or some, or, or some acid and go swallow it and I'm going to be okay. Wrong. Because that would be tempting God. And we are never to tempt God. Okay. It's just that we have this thing that happens. If you've ever been in a room and, and everybody got sick because they ate something and you didn't get sick, it's because of the power of the Holy Spirit working on the inside of you. You didn't do it on purpose. It just happened. Okay? So I need you to get that. Then he says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, I know there are people who don't believe God operates like that anymore, but I believe God wants to do everything that he did through the disciples, everything that he did through Elisha and Elijah. He wants to do all of those things to all of us now. The problem is us. We don't, one, most of us don't know we have that authority because we don't even know that we have spirits operating in us that to cause us to, to deal with our lustful nature. But when we become a new creature in God, we put on the newness of Christ and we put off the old man to become the new man. And the old man has lust that cause him to want to steal, lust that cause him to want to lie, lust that cause him to want to fornicate, all kinds of things that the Bible says that we should not do. OK, and the only way we won't do them is that we put off the old man and bring on the new man with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is what drives us into all matters of righteousness. Doesn't make us righteous. It just drives us towards matters of righteousness. It drives us towards all truth. That's his job. And he is with you for the rest of your life. And the only way he won't be with you, the only way you disqualify yourself from the use of his power is to turn your back on. I just wanted to turn around right there just so you can get a visualization of somebody just turning their back. Have you ever had somebody that's in your life that's a really good friend and then all of a sudden they just turn their back on you and you don't know why they did it? That's how the Holy Spirit feels when you turn your back on him when he's trying to, treat, to drive you towards all truths. That's our job. That's our responsibility to listen at what the Holy Spirit has to say. He's not, he's never going to lie to you. He's never going to do something that goes against God's will. And when we have the Holy Spirit operating on the end of our, in, inside of us, and we can believe we now have in delegated authority from Christ to, to speak certain things into existence. We can start praying for people and they get healed. Understanding that God has the sovereign dominion over everything that you request that he do in your name. It may not be what he had planned for that person. That should never stop us from praying. I remember when I first found out that I was praying for people in, uh, in, in areas of healing and people were getting it and then sudden people wasn't getting it. And I was like, okay. Uh, but at, at the beginning of that thing, I said, if I don't hear God telling me to pray for this person, I don't care what's wrong with you. I'm not praying. OK, and what I was doing was putting God in a box. I remember walking in to my mother-in-law's house. She was she was leaned over the kitchen stove in the oven cooking. And, and it was it was smelled so good, too. I showed Miss Luby's cooking. It was so great to have my mother-in-law cook. OK, I'm, let me get back on point here. My wife would probably talk about me for that one. But she could cook. She could throw down. I loved her cooking. But we went over there every Sunday uh, for dinner. And, and, and I walked in this particular day and I said, hey, mama, how you doing? And she said, I, I, I got a headache. And I heard the Holy Spirit and the Lord tell me, he said, pray for her. And I put my hand on her forehead and I prayed and I said, mama, and I got done praying. I said, mama, how you doing? She said, as soon as you took your hand off my head, my, 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 it, it stopped hurting. I came in there the very next week, same place, same spot. Look, everything looked the same. She told me she had a headache. And I looked at her and I walked on in, in the living room because the Lord didn't tell me to pray. She may not have understood it. I didn't fully understand it. It didn't happen until a man by the name of Elder Larry Manners, God rest his soul, because he's dead now. 
but I, we worked in the same place and I went up to his office one day and I told him that I didn't understand this. There was another point in time that somebody I got ready to pray for, I heard the Lord tell me, they're not going to get what you're praying for, but pray anyway. And I was like, well, that's kind of stupid. But I was obedient and I prayed anyway. They didn't get what I prayed for. They were dead two, three months later. Okay. Uh, from cancer. And it hurt my heart. I didn't know what to do. But he told me that day, he says, you are putting God in a box. It is not your responsibility to, de to determine whether that person is going to get what you're praying about. It is your responsibility to pray. That's, that's it. And you have that, uh, not only the responsibility, but you have the authority and you have the power to pray according to God's will for that person's life. And God will do what he only can do is give the, re the result of what you're praying for in a positive manner. Spirits do not want you to know this. There are probably some of you sitting there right now saying to yourself, yeah, yeah, he just talking. That ain't true. I done prayed for people. They ain't got what they what I prayed about. That ain't true. God ain't doing that because we ain't worthy. Well, no, I'm not worthy, but he's done it. Okay? You have to understand that the power of the Holy Spirit was given to you, by, is available to you, and if you have received it, you have the power and the authority by your belief in Jesus Christ, it was, it's right here in the scripture. He said, in my name. He didn't say in Pastor Brian's name, because I'm telling you this. He said, in my name. And the name that he's talking about is Jesus. Shall they, shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's what you have the authority to do. Stop running around here thinking like that, acting like you're powerless against things that you can't understand why you keep doing them. You've been trying to not do them. You need to speak to that thing in the name of Jesus and tell him, be gone. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have that authority. Jesus used it. Paul used it. All of the disciples and the, uh, that became apostles, they used it. There are men walking in this day and age that use it. I happen to be one of them. But you have the authority. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of you. Do not forget that. You don't have to be a lot of things that you are right now. But keep in mind. God may choose to keep some of those things in you as a thorn to remind you of his power. That it is him doing it and not you. Don't ever get so haughty that you sitting up and you start praying for somebody and you see them get what they what you what they got. I'm going to tell you right now, it scares me when I sin because I don't know and I'm not perfect. But it scares me when I sin because I don't know when somebody's going to call on me to pray for them and I'm going to be separated from the Holy Spirit. So it, it helps me stay in line. It helps me that when I sin to immediately repent to the things that I struggle with, I repent all the time because I repent daily because I need the power of the Lord working with, for me. I don't need me working for me because me can't get it done. But I serve a God that can do anything but fail in my life. So I know when he does not allow to happen what I pray about, it's because he had another plan and his plan is always better than mine. I got one plan, that's to serve him, that's to love him. Whoa! Y'all don't know where I'm at right now, but I'm in a place with God right now at this moment. Hallelujah, that I know that he loves me. I know that he loves you. And if you will trust him enough, he'll use you by the power that he has working inside of you to do great things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. And we're going to have, and I'll see y'all next on Sunday, hopefully, at church. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, we have a cash app, dollar sign. P-O-H, C-O-H, dollar sign, P-O-H, C-O-H. 
if you want to be a blessing to this ministry. If you just want to be a blessing to this ministry by praying, please do, because we can use it. If you're in the, in the area, in the uh, Columbus, Ohio area, and you want to come over and you want to serve in a capacity that does not involve your wallet, come serve. Our service starts at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. We meet here at 7, and I'm at 7.30, and my 30 minutes is up. I'm getting ready to pray and get out of here. And then on Saturdays, I give my wife just posted uh, the cash app. Uh, but at on at 7, at every Saturday, I post a few minutes with Apostle Brian, and I pick a word out of the Bible, and I try to explain it according to the Bible so that you can have clarification. So now I want to pray for you. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you bless those who are under the sound of my voice and everybody that is here to, to listen to this message from you, Lord God. We pray that it touches their heart, opens their minds, and gives them a heart to serve you and look for you as the Father in their life, Lord God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And now what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, pray, live holy every day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and good night.